Welcome, everybody. First of all, I'm the good weather for you today. <laughs> and besides this, I'm also a design researcher. So what I basically do is come up with new ideas how to shape communication technologies of the future. And to do so, I'm always quite interested in finding out what people expect from communication technologies and how this actually fits into each individual life. So being here today with you, I want to take the chance to do a quick survey together with all of you. And what I basically want to find out is who of you belongs to the typical target group for new communication services. And after this quick survey, I will also present such a new communication service to you. So please, everybody, stand up. <laughs> And all those who are seeing this talk on screen, could those also please stand up? Big companies usually don't care about women as target groups at all. They are usually considered as a niche. So, sorry, no ladies. Could all the ladies please sit down? <laughs> Just a few, okay. <laughs> One third. Right, so the typical standard target group is usually aged between 18 and 55. So could all of you who are under 18 and all of you who are over 55 please sit down? Quite a few, right, okay. So the typical target group normally has to be really fond of technology. So let's check. Those of you who don't have a mobile phone, please sit down. Right, um, so those of you who love to be reachable on their phones at all times, please sit down. So now let's be a bit more specific about the new service. So those of you who think that a call can never go on too long, may you should sit down. So you know those endless talks with your mothers. If you think a call can never go on too long, you might sit down now. <laughs> Nobody, okay, right. And now it's getting interesting. Those of you who, you who never used any kind of tricks or white lies to cut a conversation short may sit down. You've seen already the example by Jill. So, oh, sorry, dear, there's someone ringing at the door. Or maybe, oh, sorry, I have to hang up. There's a call on the other line. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so you are already my main target group. And just one last question out of curiosity. Who of you used those tricks to cut a conversation short with a woman? <laughs> OK, so you, <laughs> you are my wonderful main target group for a new service that we created. And it's called Bad Connection. And you may sit down while I show you how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sally. <laughs> okay, so that was our service idea, bad connection. But um, I have to be honest to you. So this service was actually not designed for our target group from the survey. Actually, it was developed by a woman. So we in the research team, we of course, we don't believe at all that women are a niche, but it's exactly the opposite. To quote Marty Bolletta, who was working on the Volvo's female concept car, she said, if you meet the expectations of women, you exceed the expectations of men. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, we take diversity as a standpoint and as, as a perspective in our research. So um, we were working, so Gender Inspired Technology is a project that we did, and Bad Connection was just one example and one idea that came out. So we did a research for 12 months 
together with 76 women. They were aged between 14 and 65. They had quite individual backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, living as a single or in a family, being employed or working at home. We also had a male control group of 14 participants who were running through the same research process. What we developed is more than 100 prototypes for new ideas for service and product concepts. So here you see an example of how diverse those uh, product ideas were. And we did these in co-design workshops together with those creative women and men. So the paradigm that we follow is do it with others. And so how do we do this? We have to create spaces for, for en enhancing this kind of exchange and trying to get to know what people really need, what it's all about, what they expect. And therefore, we, we're working with uh, kids and teenagers from immigrant families, and they created their own communication artifacts. We were working together with the senior computer club. Who, then they developed their own platform for sharing time and resources in local neighborhoods. We were working together with deaf people, and they taught us about their spatial communication system, about sign language, and they had great ideas how to use gestures in human-computer interaction. So what I believe in is for creating ideas for the future, we have to be inspired by the diversity of our society. So this is the most important point. And what is our role in that? So we as design researchers can facilitate environments. We can interpret ideas and help them turn, become something real. And we as researchers, we are not the only experts for creating the future of communication, but you are. And people out there on the streets with their quite specific needs, their constraints and their wishes, they are the expert for tomorrow. So we have to unleash the creat creative potential in every individual. We have to foster this creativity. And so the message is, you know, diversity is not a problem. It is a source of inspiration for us. So let us take a closer look and meet people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.